Greetings, welcome to Terra Prime Live. Darth Anonymous here, born on joining me. Today we're going to be going over reverse grip. Everybody loves that, talking about taking this, holding it this way. Helping us talk about that today, we've got our uh, resident uh, peanut gallery here. How you doing, Master Wheelos, Craig Page, how you doing? I'm doing all right, how are you guys? Pretty good, pretty good. And... Ed Artorius, how's it going? Going great, guys. Looking forward to a good show. Excellent. We've got Eric from Ontario. Good evening, everybody. TGIF, glad to be here as always. Excellent. And joining us in from the West Coast, Lucian Kane. How you doing there? Oh, uh, better every day. It's good to be here. Excellent. It's so okay. sunny and warm out there. I know. I know. It's so crazy. Here. We had that yesterday, and today it's back to Michigan winter. Yeah, or Michigan summer. Well, I guess it's not summer yet. There's no construction. But anyway, so uh, we are going to talk about today the, probably the most contentious beyond the spinning, the saber spinning, the most contentious thing that you see a lot in the saber community here. Um, which is reverse grip, as we, as we said before. If you're tuning in with us, obviously you're probably doing it because of that. And what we mean by reverse grip, we have our saber here. This is our standard grip. Everything's coming out that way. Reverse grip is holding it this way. And we all know the star killer poses and all of that kind of thing. And that's really, I think, where a lot of the popularity of this stuff comes from, um, is from the video games. Um, the techniques of uh, reverse grip, as far as sword play go, they do exist. There are techniques that exist for holding your weapon in that fashion. Um, some people call it underhand. Um, I've always called it ice pick grip. Um, it's more common to see in knife and short weapon fighting. Um, and we'll go into that a little bit more, but what you'll notice in every place that it's done, it's a transitional technique. It's not meant to be relied upon for a whole lot of time. It's a switch. It's something to just kind of keep the thing moving, change up the, the dynamics a little bit. An, an extra tactic that you can apply as opposed to being the only tactic, you know, the, only, the only technique system that you use. It's another tool in the toolbox as opposed to the only tool. Right, right. Um, and we'll go over a little bit of the historical aspect of it, and we'll also go over a little bit of the mechanics of it, right? There are certain strengths and weaknesses to the technique, both martially and mechanically. We'll go over the me mechanical ones first, because those are pretty cut and dry. There's really no argument about them. Um, and then we'll kind of go into some of the strategic ones a little bit, and we'll show you how to overcome those if you want to employ this technique in your sparring. Um, so first of all, let's talk about the weapon itself, right? Any sword like this we see is asymmetrical, meaning it has a front and a back side, a top and a bottom, all of that kind of thing. Okay? That means it's meant to be held in a particular direction. It is designed to be held like this. Okay? The reason it's designed to be held like this is because this is the part that we use, and these are the fingers that we use to manipulate the world around us. These are not supporting players right here, okay? They can come into this, but if anybody's broken either of these two fingers, you just pretty much take them up and go about your day. Break these two fingers, oh boy, you break your thumb, you're hurting. So, we have to overcome this major fact. The sword is a weapon that was designed, has evolved, and all the techniques are related to holding it like this, period. It was not developed to do anything but. Now we'll get into some weapons that may have been, that can, that, that are more useful in, in this type of thing with the business end is behind you. But the, the biggest obstacle that we have is that we're going to have to use this in a way that it's really not designed to be used. Okay. So there, there's a couple of things that we give up when we do that mechanically. First of all, if I am holding it like this, you see, I can pretty much, and I'm kind of staying within the frame, 
and I can go really fast, and I can keep it, you know, pretty, pretty steady and, and, and pretty in the in, in the frame. If I hold it back like this, all of a sudden, I get I'm okay here, right? Doing this wrist, wrist flick, I'm okay there, right? But anytime I start twisting it, then all of a sudden I'm I'm slowing down. So I'm already limited my range of motion with my hand. Now if I do this here, I can control the pommel. That doesn't do me much good with a lightsaber. Okay. If you're using steel blades, of course, you know that's fine. But uh, with a lightsaber, no, you can't do that. Okay. Um, so that's the the first one is there is that we're going to be using this in an unconventional way. Okay. The reason it's unconventional is because it's not really meant to be used that way. Um, the other thing about it is is the reason our hands are are asymmetrical as well. We have a thumb on one side of our hand, not on the other, okay? And then our fingers go in descending order here. These two kind of work together. These, these three are all pretty independent, okay? Now, we obviously get the most from these three fingers. So you can, if you had broken these fingers, you can tape them up, you can immobilize them in any way, shape, or form, and I'll bet you can pretty much do everything that you can do normally with your with your saber, right? Reverse that grip, right? And now, and if you can see here, if I don't use those fingers, it all of a sudden becomes very sloppy. I don't have this this back and forth anymore. I have to keep those fingers on there. My hand is inherently weak down here because it does not have a thumb. Okay? There's nothing I can do about that. If you go back to our show on disarms, remember we're always going for this area right here. Okay. Now when we're doing this, the reason that we might want to do something like this is that we can then push this with this side here. The thing is, is that you can also push it like this. So it's we, and we'll go into some, when we go into some of the techniques, some of the techniques can be done in reverse grip. There's really no reason to, because it just takes time to switch over. Um, do you have anything to add? Just, just, just to elaborate a little bit, just about everything that, just about everything we're doing with, with the reverse grip can be done with a, with a, with a regular grip. Um, it is, a, like, like we've said a number of times, it's in a, it's a transitory position to work from. It can give you something of an advantage, uh, especially if you are working in close, uh, responding to responding to a surprise or trying to initiate something surprising for someone else. Right. Um, one thing, though, to remember, um, especially as you're starting out, what may seem surprising to you may not seem surprising to somebody else. Right? They may not even notice you do it. And if they don't notice that you do it, there's no surprise there, right? A lot of the switching of the grip and everything like that happens so fast, and its effectiveness actually depends on them not noticing, right? And and that's what that's what we're looking for. Um, anything to add out there? Anybody on the on the panel? Anyone? Uh, during the uh, the disarms, uh, maybe you're going to get to this, uh, uh, Master, but uh, you, you, we noticed that the the, the fulcrum point, um, when we were prying the sabers out of each other's hands, uh, well, we did so in the uh, in the weak part. And and we talked about this too during that show at the end, but um, just the inherent weakness of the fact that this... Uh, are you getting to this later? Am I just jumping the gun here? I'm just noticing... Uh, you, you mentioned the range of motion, but it, is that also compounded by uh, even just a weak hold on the hilt, uh, just due to that fulcrum? Yeah, I mean, there is a weaker hold on the hilt, and that's going to, uh, you know, of course, do it. You were mentioning something, too, that there is also a mechanical disadvantage in that you lose range of motion here, okay? So whereas I can go this far around, okay, like that, okay, I can't go that far around. So I can pretty much go like that. If I have this, 
I can point my saber behind me both sides. Okay? This is range of motion through the whole arm. Right. And it's range of motion through the whole saber, too. All right. I, I simply do not have as much reach. Um, yes. And that's going to be an important uh, uh, dynamic is the reach thing. Um, one of the uh, other mechanical disadvantages that you get that you cannot do anything about, this is just the thing, is if we range each other here, right, with a standard grip, right, here's our range, right? If I do a reverse grip, okay, I've given up a little bit of range. But not only a little bit of range, if he tries to come in from another side, right, oh, just right here, come in from another side, like, push, I'm sorry, push your leg here, you go to push your leg here. If I do this, he's stuck, right? He can only go back and forth. And if I stay here and I just go down here, he doesn't have really much of a chance to do anything. Right? Same thing on uh, here, all he has to do is go around to the other side and get my rest. You see, here, boom. Okay. We'll go into how to how, how to deal with that as well, but there. Boom. Okay. So uh, that's that that would be another big disadvantage and a challenge that you're going to have employing it, especially against an uncooperative opponent. Um. The, the purpose of this is to address the, uh, address the, inherent, um, the inherent challenges. Um, there, are some, there, there are going to be weak points in any, in, any, uh, in any approach, in any technique, and we want to highlight those so that you know what you're working with so that we can address them and compensate for them and use this to its greatest advantage. There are points where this will be advantageous. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, any uh, comments out there? How about you, uh, Lucian? Uh, yeah. Um, with this type of uh, with this with this type of uh, technique that we're talking about, with this type of grip, it's an unconventional grip. Uh, it's not what the weapon was designed for. Um, it's it's not the mechanics that the weapon was designed to be employed with. So if you're if you're utilizing unconventional grips and and uh, and and using the weapon kind of how it wasn't intended to be used, you have to adopt unconventional uh, tactics to go with that. Uh, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna fight the same way you would with a standard grip, and, and you're not gonna use the same approach. So I think just Realizing that and getting through the misconceptions of what the grip is and what it isn't um, is is the key. You know, it's not some uh, better way of fighting, uh, and and I don't think it should be considered an exclusive way of fighting. Um, I, I think it should be something that uh, you know you, you train with so that you know how to how to employ it, uh, but not something that you you completely and solely rely on. Yeah, no, that's a good yeah. point. Um, Yes, the the and, and the the unconventional aspect of, of 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 the way you employ it is absolutely key. You you can't employ it like a sword, really. You have to think about it in a kind of in a different way. Um, and you and we'll see. And I think the best illustration of that is uh, this. First of all, historically speaking. These techniques, a lot of these te techniques came from uh, traditions where people would be walking around with a sword in a scabbard, right? Um, it, it, they're used a lot in Chinese swordplay uh, for that reason. Um, it's in Yaido, it's in the Japanese stuff, the Korean stuff. And the basic idea is that at some point, if you're carrying your weapon, and let's say the Chinese, right, you'll see a lot of Chinese forms, they start out in this in this position here, and they might do a bunch of little thingamabobbers to, to start out the thing, and people are always asking why. 
And one of the reasons is, is because of the way they traditionally held their, their scabbard and their sword. And that would be like this. So I would walk in, if I'm being polite, I would be holding it in my dominant hand by the scabbard. So I am not ready to draw it on anybody. It's, you know, it's kind of like table manners, right? So as I'm here like this, right, if you um, want to grab that and then if, for some reason, somebody, some ruffian comes in and tries to uh, take my head off, right, and I have this, I take the sword out to provide a little bit of a blow, okay? Now notice that I'm using my body to brace the sword, okay, like this. Okay, I'm not looking to stop it because I'm not going to be able to stop this blade. What I'm looking to do is stop it from cutting me. At this point, I probably take the scabbard to try to come out and do something, but try to get in to the correct position as quickly as I could. Right? Most of the time, they would just toss the scabbard back and you know, just toss the scabbard down. Um, in Yaido, I know they, there's a lot of that where you you bring the sword up here, but then it's brought down into it, you know into into your strikes. You can bring it back again to do your all your little scabbard tricks. And I know there are people out there who study the Yaido, so it'd be really right. great to hear some comments on this. Yes, who are, yeah, who are I know, I know, Ed does. Um, so. Uh, maybe he can shed some light on some of the uh, Yaito reverse grip techniques. Yeah, look, I just, I literally just went mute screen so I could run upstairs and grab a couple toys uh, because Very the cool. second you pulled out the Chinese sword, I went, oh man, I just thought of three applications. I gotta get some stuff. So before we get to the uh, the Aijutsu or the Aido or however you want to say it, um, this is. A straight edge ninja sword and classical stories of ninjas in feudal Japan often have them wielding this blade with a reverse grip. So some fun facts about the way they did that. One of the popular guard stances was to have the handle in the upper left hand corner and you can barely see the blade because it's it's a razor sharpie. Sorry guys I only buy the real stuff. Um, blade here and the other hand would be here underneath there's a couple reasons for it. You got the quick flick to slice at any incoming attacks on either side. If there's an overhead. You can also take this underhand, put your hand on the spine of the blade, and create a two point of contact strong block. Boom. You can't do that with a lightsaber. Your hand is gone. It's not an option. And because of the tuba, this hand guard that protects the blade of your opponent from running up and cutting your fingers, you don't really have the option of bracing it up against your your forearm. Look what it does to my wrist. It's completely broken. There's no strength here. And you can see it on the other side with my grip. There's a big old hole here in my grip with my thumb running up top just to make it touch my forearm a little bit. So the traditional opening stance is here with the hand underneath so that you can strong block or... The other thing they would do is block, grab, and stab underneath. Another fun trick. But this other hand is coming into play to do a lot of things. Ninja sword. Okay. Now for the katanas. This is a 1050 carbon steel, sharp enough to cut through your skull. Lovely thing. Traditional drawing. First of all, same thing. Japan, you walk into somebody's house, you carry it in your right hand, your dominant hand, but the handle has to be behind you. You have to hold it handle behind you because then you really can't draw. Really, really no option because it's not there. The idea being that you could quick switch and draw that way. The underhand use of the katana, it's so unorthodox, you almost never see it. It's due to the curvature of the blade, the, the length, because, you know, you're talking about three feet of steel, and this is an extra long handle because I like the Miyamoto style. But the reverse grip, 
here, there's so much weight down here because of the length of the steel blade and the curvature that to get it to move efficiently, it's really not going to happen. There are drawing techniques, however, for a reverse grip. There are closed quarter drawing techniques where you take a reverse grip, you actually step back to unsheath the blade and can come around. It's extremely unusual, though, because you can, as we said before, do the exact same thing with an overhand grip. Okay? So, in conclusion, and it's a quote that I've been thinking about using, when you're using a reverse grip, you have to keep in mind, in one of the very bad Zorro movies, Antonio says to one of my favorite actors, I know how to use this. The pointy end goes in the other man. Why are you putting the pointy end? We'll talk about that next week. So that's what I... Right, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is about how to make this, how to make this work. It can right. work. Just not... Yes. Yeah. It can work. Um, so let's go into some of that. Um, how are you going to take, take this stuff and, and how do you make it work? Um, what are the unconventional attacks? Um, what, or what are the unconventional uh, things that you're going to do? Um, and let's go through them here a little bit. I will bash here on Hornock so you can hear me well. This is my wife's favorite part of the show. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. Okay. So, so what most people will do intuitively is they're going to take this and they're going to, they're going to try to strike with it, right? Because they like this fucking feeling, right? The thing is, is that's actually slower than just doing this, okay? And the reason is here. Now you can make it into a feint. So if we're going through a bunch of stuff and I, unbeknownst to him, switch my grip, then when I come here, he might react to this, which will come around and I'll be able to do that. High percentage technique? Not at all. Could it work? Sure. Just like winning the lottery every now and then happens. So, so the, star, the, the good old star killer where I'm going to be like here, and I'm going to go, ha! Ah! And, and get him. Mm. Let's uh, I'll throw the mask on here. Let's, and we'll do more of this next week. But uh, let's just see how well that works. This I will try to tag Hornock here using the reverse grip from here. Okay. Got me in the elbow. Okay, so now many of you might say, oh, you're not even trying. I am. He is. He, yeah. he tagged me a couple times. You know, so it's just not going to work. Um, it's too slow. And it's too slow in a way that doesn't tell you that it's too slow. Because you're holding on to the, to the handle, it's the same shape. You feel like it's moving faster, right? Because now you have resistance on the bottom of your hand. Okay. So that gives you this illusion that you're moving really fast, but you're not. The other thing is, is that the blade is coming by just after you expect it to. So it gives them another illusion of it moving a little faster. Um, so if we're not going to hit with it, what do we do with it? Right? Well, like we said with the historical stuff, most of the techniques come from being caught unawares. Right? I'm just sitting there with my sword, do, 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 and somebody's going to come up, right? Ah! Right? I don't have time to get myself into a conventional grip. Now, of course, with a lightsaber, that's a little difficult to stand here like this. But let's say I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, well, I'm talking to you guys. This is why you should never hold the, the saber in 
in this particular grip. Right? Here, as it comes in, now I'm going to come in even, even uh, closer. Right? I'm going to close that gap. Okay? Here's where I have the advantage with this particular grip. Okay? He's going to try to bring his saber up and over, which is fine for me. Either way. Okay? But here's the other thing that I'm going to do. As he comes in like that, I block up, I'm going to come over, hit him, and I'm going to be back in regular grip. Okay? I'm not going to stay there. Okay? So again, he catches me unaware. I end up blocking it because I'm lucky, and I come around, switch the grip like that. <clears throat> okay? So this is essentially starting in a reverse grip and then switching back, okay? And you'll notice that the real trick to using the reverse grip is being able to switch back and forth. It's not holding it, it's the switching. So it's, let's say he comes in with a lower attack, right? And I am carrying it here. Now obviously this is a very weak pair, right? So if I stand here like this, it's just gonna come in, it's just gonna come in for me. So again, I have to rely on movement. Where am I going to go? I'm going to go to the center, where it's safe. And turn around. I've got my back to him. I take this, and I bring it here, and then I'm out. Again, transitioning into standard grip. I'm not staying in reverse grip. As soon as I get out, I'm back in normal. Um, come from the other side, right? same thing. Right? If I come from here, I want to get like this. This might be a little different. He might want to come up front. So I'm going to duck down and get him there. Again, switching back to standard grip. Okay? If I come out and I'm still like this, I have not accurately judged the situation. If I, I know that if I'm holding it like this, I'm at a disadvantage. So I now have to work extra hard to keep that, that edge going. Um, I want to turn back right into here. We can do another one. If I come up, if, if he comes up and I, and I hit him here, right, I can then take this down here, switch the grip, and bring it up that way. Notice again, I'm moving out of the way because he's not just going to stand there. Right? I come up, bring it down, there. Notice too, I might be going up into a high guard, going out to create like that. So as I'm running away, I get a little parry toward the back. Okay? Again, boom, down. Okay? It probably wasn't visible, but just in the passing, you cut across both of my forearms. Right. Because the angle, the angle, the angle, the angle. Right. So we can go to the other side too. So if I come here, oops, like this, and I come over the top, that's where it is. Okay? So if we do this close, let's do this up here at the camera. I'll show you how I'm doing it from reverse grip. Okay? We get here. Okay? I'm going to take my other hand and put it on the pommel, right? As this comes around here, I let go, switch, bring it here as I'm stepping back, okay? If I go the other way, if I'm like this, I've accidentally gotten it that way, I can take it over this way. When I get to here, I switch my grip. Bring it to here, there, and then we walk out. Okay? We're doing it far away, far away from each other so you can see. But as you see, when we're doing it, it's happening extremely close in. Uh, let's try to do it here again. So, right? Okay? Um, let me put the helmet on and then he feels free to retaliate. Okay. Now remember, I, we're, 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 we're making the conceit 
that I'm blocking like this. This isn't he he has he has caught me unawares with me holding my saber wrong, and that's where I'm going from. I'm not using this as an initial parry. Okay, that's very, very clear. Okay, so we're here. Okay, if I come over, there. It's very quick if you get it right. Comes in again. Oops, that was the wrong way. Right? Boom, there. Okay. Okay. Well, we more here so we can see it. Okay, low. I'm going to do it lower here. Okay. Here. Uh, and don't turn your saber off as you go around. Okay, so that's kind of like the first level of it here, right? You've been caught unawares in this position, and now you have to do something about it. You have to get back to this position. The easiest way to get from this position to this position is just how I did it right there. Right? Nothing fancy. You're holding it with one hand. Doing it this way. Okay? Each side. Go. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. Okay? You'll see this in some German manuals where they get into positions like this. Up here, they'll reverse their grip like that to, to, to come down. Okay? This is one of those techniques where we're telling you that you don't need to go into reverse grip. It's just as easy to bring it up like this and stab down in a standard grip. You do this, maybe you're in a struggle in a bind or something like that. And, and that would be the case. Okay. Other ways you can do it are flips. When you practice, practice doing flips and doing fancy stuff so that when you're doing the regular stuff, it's real easy. Right? And I can transfer to each there. Okay. And you want to be able to go quick. Doing these is good for ah, practice, but just like that, you're going to drop it every now and then. Okay? So a, a, a flip, even though you see it a lot, right, is good for practicing getting your, your this, but you're never going to do that when you're fighting somebody. Ever. <laughs> Okay. Best best case for you is you might lose your grip in the middle of the fight and be able to regain it. Right, right. That's that that would be the only that's, purpose there. But that's a very low percentage. Uh, exactly. Expensive. Yeah, you, you practice it like juggling, and hopefully that will transfer. Um, yeah. So that would be the first one, going from reverse grip to standard grip. That would be the the first one. Anybody got anything to add on that one? I want to echo oh, that. Not. Oh, go ahead, Craig. No, no, I'm just saying it all looks good from here. Yeah, I agree with everything you you pretty much said. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. I, especially the letting go of the blade, using two hands to transfer. Do it. Yes. Don't, 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 don't do it with one hand. That that like people do the flippy up in the air catchy thingy, and I go eh, no because while your blade's in the air, I'm going ha ha, and don't let go. Bad. It's not a real good combat application, but you know, it's, it's, right. it's, 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 it's a, you can look at it as a developmental exercise. Yes. Yeah, and then I just want to add on, notice how, uh, notice how close uh, Darth Anonymous has to move in uh, for any of those techniques to work. Um, mm -hmm. Proximity, I think, is, is one of the keys. For reverse grip, because you're not gonna you're not gonna get into a reach battle with someone using that grip, because you you've hampered your grip. So any time that he's that he's doing any of those techniques, they're always closing techniques. They're always distance closing techniques, trying to take uh, your opponent's reach out of commission, and uh, it's not an easy task. And that's why that's why reverse grip, uh, kind of among uh, a lot of you know people who do sword arts has such a bad rap because you, you know we we bank on this being a, a somewhat uh, medium ranged weapon yeah oh, 
I was going to say something, something that we've alluded to but not directly addressed is um, the body mechanics of this. This, is, this isn't, the control of this is coming from body positioning and footwork and less from arm positioning. Because you are limited in your range of motion, limited in where you're strong and weak, you need to, if anything, rely on position and, and uh, footwork even more. Yep. All right. Um, let's move on to now the next types of techniques where we're going to be moving from standard grip into reverse grip. Okay. And um, the, when we would do this is going to be um, almost entirely from the bind. Um, in, I will be putting it into my uh, Shen curriculum, um, which will be called folding. Okay, and that's why uh, I'm calling it folding because it's more about the action than it is about the grip or the technique or, or, or what have you. So we have a scenario where we are in a bot. Okay, so we come here. And we're like this. Now, we don't want to be here for very long, okay? So I'm going to want to try to get out, and he's going to want to try to do the same thing. We're going to be trying to hit each other. The thing about it is, is when we're this close to each other, we lose sight of most of the fight. Most of the fight's happening above our head. We're judging everything based on this little square right here. So everything's out of our peripheral vision, okay? This is the time where if I switch my grip over, it may it may change the, the 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 anticipated arc on his on his part to the point where I'll be able to get in. Okay, now this is where we come, where the unconventional stuff comes in. So if I come in here and I'm going to go on to this side, I'll switch the grip over and I'll come down here. You see, going for right here. I then come out again. And again, back into standard. So I'm essentially switching once here and then twice again. So I'm not staying in the in the in the reverse grip. From from this bind position, the response might be to come over the top. That's where that change in grip comes uh, effect. Yep. So. It, 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 takes, it, it takes my direction of travel and the gains of the hit to the striking position. Right. Okay. Um, and it uses that very limitation that is that we're not using the sword the way that it's supposed to be. Because when we're hand the bind, we're concentrated on the blade. So he's trying to push my blade down. But if I want my blade to go down, he's just going to help that. And then I can come out and and attack that. Okay. Again, has to be quick. If you do this slow, if you do this half, you know, with with, with half a heart, it ain't gonna work. I guarantee. Um, let me put the helmet on here, and I'll show that one a little bit faster and with a little less cooperativeness for here. Okay. Again, let's try that again. See how fast it goes. Okay. <laughs> Turned my saber off, but that's okay. Okay. There. Okay. So the switch is quick. I'm coming up. As soon as I feel that thing, I come down again, and I'm coming back out. Right. Not waiting around to see what happens. Okay. Um, so now, from the other side, if I come here, ooh, right, I can then come here. Now I can push it with a little extra force, right? But I want to be quick to dip it over and come here, just like that. Do it slow again. We're here. I bring it down. I reverse the grip. Bring it over, I walk through, and point toward my opponent again in standard grip. Okay? So, here, just like that. Okay? Now, I'm 
not going into standard grip because I know I'm walking off camera. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so there's that good one. Okay. The other thing that I can do, and this is another thing. It's called ice cream grip because people like doing this, you know, or the psycho grip. Okay. Here's the problem with that. Okay. I come through here like this. Let's say I get in here like this. And I push this way. Boom, he carries it off to the side. I'm dead. Okay? This is what we consider to be a conventional attack. One that will not work very well. Where it will work is if you get in real close and you do it behind you. Here. Reverse grip here, bring it under that way. Got okay. it? Okay. Again, up here, I can come around that way. Boom. Okay. It's very quick, and I have to be right up against it. As I'm here, when I come here to reverse the grip, I'm shoulder to shoulder with them. I'm pushing them off to the side so that I can do this and there's nothing he can do about it. Right? If I really want to get tricky, I go low so that even if he tries to go for my head, I'm not there. Um, okay, now we can do that same type of thing from, from a full moon parry here. So he comes in like this, up, reverse the grip, stab, there, oh, you didn't see, huh? Right there. Okay. So, up, reverse grip, here, there's the stab right there, and of course come around again to get him there. If he wants to go one more time, and out. Okay, so now doing the, doing the uh, new moves block, so he comes from overhead here, boom, like this, reverse the grip, stab there, same thing, over to this side, over to this side, there, okay? A great position for this grip is standing with your back to your opponent. Let's say I get into here, this is a good one. I come in here, we're in a bind. Right? I reverse grip. I push his hands over to this side, and I come in like this. Right? Now, I pretty much got free reign of it. Okay? Even if he tries to tries to hit me with his sword, okay, he can't get there. Reverse grip is necessary right here because, well, <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of leverage right there because he's behind me. And that's the other thing, too. This is more dangerous now behind. So if I do end up parrying, right, boom, I want my, my body turned all the way. And people say, well, why? You're totally open. If he goes for my back, I want to be able to whip around and come through there. See? Okay? So come around. Like, try to get Okay? There. Boom. And back. Okay? But as you see, I come in. There. Okay? I'm not going to back up out of it. That would be suicide. I'm going to go into it. Okay? Oops. Uh, boom. Bang. Okay. Uh, Okay, so that would be the next kind of thing of techniques there. Do we got any uh, questions, comments, additions? Question. Yes. Okay, so I, I obviously have my own opinion being a, a crazy person, but I want to see what you are going to say to this. Uh, when you're switching the grip from standard to reverse, as you switch your hand, do you prefer losing contact with the hilt, or do you attempt to keep the contact of some kind 
Now, I'm not saying, you know, an actual grip, but some kind of physical contact between your hand and the hilt as you switch. It depends. It's a good point. You probably, it's, it's probably a good idea to try to keep as much contact on the grip as possible throughout there. Um, it's hard to do with the gloves because right. they are a little thicker, um, or at least it's hard to do so that you can see it, right? If I'm going to switch, my major uh, way is to do this. I'll be in a standard grip like this. I will push the pommel up, and you see I roll it mm -hmm. around either my, my hand or my, my thumb or my, uh, or my pinky. Okay. Now you can practice that, right, by doing those those, those little flips, like that. Okay, because you get good with these, and then, okay, and then it gets in like that. Okay, right. Now this is another good reason for um, to, to practice these spins. If you wanted to switch up, right, being able to switch like that seems like you know might make a good good idea it doesn't but uh, what you want to do with the spins is as you see as I'm going around that helps me reposition my hand on the saber while it's moving so if we replicate it here with uh, in the bind right the movement is being rep is replicating the force that he's putting on my blade that I then have to keep contact with here. There are techniques where you're going to let go. If we're up here in the bind, I can reach through, right? Obviously, that's going to require me to let go, right? Um, right? You can. There's all kinds of weird things that you can do. Most of them aren't really necessary. Right? They're, again, things you can do in standard are far easier without the added hoopla. <laughs> right? um, yes. So, yeah, good question. Um, so we, there was a, we had a question in the forum from uh, Ben Pence about uh, how do you block. And while we haven't specifically said that, we have been addressing it as we've gone along. We want to clarify. Yeah, let's clarify that. You're not really going to block with reverse grip. That would be not smart. Okay, You can get away with it with a steel weapon because you can use your body to brace the strike. But your hand and the sword are not meant to, do, to interact like this. So you're always going to get this blowback action. Right? Um, <clears throat> There. Now, of course, there are people who will sit there and will say, oh, yeah, well, I can see sit here like this and go around like that and get you. Yeah, sure. You can get that once. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, you better only try it once because if you try it again, smack you. Going back to uh, position, body position, relative to your opponent, you've got a reach disadvantage. Um, if, you're, if you're trying that, it's going to be a reaction to my coming in and not having to hit you right. before I get this far away. Right. Yep. Um, guys, uh, can I jump in and point? Uh, sure. Just because I want to throw in, because uh, the whole, you know, being able to, like, do a straight block uh, underhanded. Um, I brought with me several, you know, because Ed wasn't the only one who, who cracked open his toy chest today. <laughs> um, I brought a few of my friends. Um, this lovely little number here is a straight-up Tonfa. Um, black hardwood, one of my favorites. My Padawan actually bought this for me uh, as a Christmas gift. So, But um, this thing, if uh, for those of you at home and who haven't seen one, you know, works purely... Under the arm, under you know, it's essentially all reverse grip, um, and it works pretty much by emphasizing, you know, you're blocking with the meat of your arm. You're already doing basic blocking motions. Sorry, my camera angle sucks. Um, <laughs> and that's the only real way that you're going to be able to block with something like this, because essentially it is the same length of your, from your hand to your elbow. All it is is it's a support beam. That's really all it's doing. 
it gets yeah. a little bit more interesting. You know, this is just it's a simple just you're now adding hardwood flooring to a already sturdy, you know, floor. Um, you know, and but basically its main purpose is to do let me just pull back up here a little bit, you know, so, you know, wrist flicks and simple you know, movements. You're doing glancing mo motions more often than not to get most or any work done. That gets a little bit more pronounced when you have a weapon like this, which is, you know, you know, since, you know, Starkiller made the uh, reverse grip very famous for all of the Star Wars fans, uh, it made, you know, Mars Broods, you know, lightsaber taunt was very popular. You've now added another extra foot to your blade, and as you can see, I can't really block that high, and I don't believe in the lightsaber-resistant material. So this whole arm guard part is useless. So now all of the attacks, all of the strikes, have to be glancing and quick motions. So blocking with a long, elongated blade is difficult at best and impossible at most. So please, you know, it's one of my it's one of my reasons why I'm not a big proponent of reverse grip. I will go into that next week in <laughs> in verbose detail. Um, but the Tanfa is really one of the only weapons that is is built for reverse grip or what we call reverse grip. And even then, it's not notorious for being like a devastating, you know, you know, weapon. It enhances what you know. It doesn't automatically make anyone a, you know, the ultimate sneaky badass. Right. But I'll, I'll say this. Can I jump in here? Absolutely. It's your. <laughs> um, the, uh, the 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 interesting thing about the Tonfa is that that is a weapon that is that is designed to be used in that way. And you can tell because that handle is coming out perpendicular to, to the surface here. And that allows you to get that extra range of motion that we said you lose in, in, in this particular motion. So that's a, that's a very good example of a weapon that is designed to be used in that fashion. The sword um, is not designed to be used in that fashion. And here's, here's one of the things about the Tanfa. Even you know when you want to do actual more mobility and more tactics, you change the grip, and now you have a hook and a bludgeoning weapon. So even then, you know, you even when it's still under, you know, underhand, it is not just underhand. It can, you know, it's still used as a transitional weapon, or and still used, you know, in transitional movements. So right, please keep that in mind that even. Even when it's the norm, it is not the the law. Yeah. Something that comes up a lot uh, when we're talking about the first groups, people talk about the shogo or a dagger or knife version. I don't know, it's a little bit wrong, but it's, it'll, it'll do. It's almost dagger-like, and you will see a lot of uh, a lot of actual combat techniques that use the reverse grip on the dagger, um, and. You can certainly do that if you have a heavy lightsaber dagger, but keep in mind that a lot of the a lot of techniques used involve having the dagger along your forearm, um, and then you run into that problem of since we're talking about doing this with lightsabers, you're chopping right. your own forearm. So uh, it, a lot of what we're saying still applies. There are disadvantages to the weapon. Um, we're, we're talking about we're talking about our, our magic our magic. Omni cutting swords here, uh, and within that, uh, that context, um, we lose out on some possibilities simply because we can't we can't use the blade as a part of the as for, for manipulating the weapon the same way we use with a steel or wood. Or, right. Uh, a contemporary well, weapon. One of the things about you know knife fighting reverse grip is you know I'm holding it I'm using a blade just you know for one of my sabers because it's short enough, but if when you're using a knife and you're using it underhanded, you're already, using a knife in general, you're already, like, right next to the person as you're using it. Like, there's no, you know, so you're not overreaching, you're not overextending. It is kept tucked in, so you can do, like, quick little nicks and cuts, and you can be sneaky and, you know, stab them by elbowing them and, you know, 
in the rib cage, it's you know it's pra it's practical to use it like this for some cases because you're already inside their defenses. Yeah. yeah. And you can you know if you're using a straight up knife, you know you actually have a little bit more defensive because now you have a metal plate you know that you can bat away their knife if they have it you know while while you're moving around. So it's those people using reverse grip. It's don't you know. Uh, me and Matt were talking, you know, me, Matt bringing out his Claymore and having it in Tonfa grip using the cross guard earlier. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, that was funny, but it's just like, you know, it's, <laughs> this, this has to be seen. It made me laugh because I, I never once thought you could do that. <laughs> I just never, never thought about it before in my life. I'm like, that's cool, but what, you know, practically, you know, practicality uh -oh. speaking. Oh, what happened? You okay. Yeah. Well, we're, we're okay. We're super, Craig's cutting in and out, so we'll we'll this is what he was talking about here. Um, okay. Holding a a, a, a long sword by, by the grip, not not the best idea. Not at all. No. Not uh, at all. Now the interesting thing with the knives and the stabbing. Here's the reason why stabbing works with a knife and not a sword. And it's it's pretty easy. Length of the blade, right? Um, this is even too long. Um, if I stab him, and we'll just go underneath his arm like this, right? Boom, right? In order to pull that out now, I have to pull it all the way back out, right? Now, granted, it's a lightsaber. I could just come in and <laughs> zoom, right? But, well, you know, stabbing it in like that, I then have to bring it out. With a knife, it's just like, it's in and out, and you can, you can do multiples of them at the same time. Um, hence the psycho scene. Yeah. <laughs> but uh uh yeah. Um the Yeah, I don't know we, we don't have any questions. So anyone have any other any other comments, questions? Ed, you're raising your hand. I oh, know me. What you're oh me. Oh right. me. Let's pick Ed. All right. Take Yay. it away. The, the the teacher in me is so mad at you because it's Friday and I'm not at school anymore. Um <laughs> I teased this a second ago. I don't know if anybody was looking down here at me. Uh, probably not, because you shouldn't. But it's it's one of those weapons that no one's ever made into a lightsaber, and I'm kind of disappointed. Uh, traditional Japanese Sai. They have. Uh, a friend you of have? mine. Made, yes, yes. Oh. One, uh, a member of Long Island Jedi does have a pair of light Sai. I will. I, I, I I'll, I'll send you pictures. Don't worry. Thank they you. do exist. That's not awesome. Practical. Not practical in any way, way shape, I or form. I totally believe it. I just want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> I, will hook, I will hook you up with a guy. I know a guy. He's the, the same guy. Who made my, who, he's the same guy who made my tonfus. Awesome. The so, point being, up. it's a semi-reverse grip, but that's not what a sigh is for from a weapon standpoint. It, it's. I mean, a real reverse grip would be here, but it's. You can't tell me this is a standard grip. That's my point. This is not a standard grip. And again, it's a transitional point. You hit with the butt end. You can sometimes do a quick forearm block, but you flip it out when you really want to use it, and then you put it away when you want to move around. The difference here being that it's kept down when you want to be maneuverable, flipped out for function. Again, same thing that Anonymous was showing us. It's the same concept because you're literally putting it here for maneuverability to get out of a bind, and then you flip it back for functionality. You know, all these weapons, you know, Craig's got the Tonfa. He flipped it out for functionality. You flip it back for maneuverability. It's, and he's showing it because he's awesome. That's, <laughs> it's a transitional, good for a short period of time, and it is. Reverse grip is useful for a short period of time. I think the biggest mistake and misconception is that people think, oh, reverse grip is a great idea for me to use constantly through every single fight I ever go through. And that's where the failing is. It's not that reverse grip is complete garbage, which we'll talk about next week. It's the fact that you try to overuse it. That's the biggest problem to me personally. Yeah. Um, I, I have a quick question for the panel. Who here is really looking forward to next week? <laughs> Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Come on. I'm there. Oh, I'm yeah. going to be there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. So, I, I'm very happy. Before we cut out, I wanted to go here before we before we cut out, um, is what if you want to use 
reverse grip, how should you train it? What should you practice? What, 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 what should be the thing? Should you do a form entirely in reverse grip? Stuff like this? Uh, okay, maybe, right? But mm, you, you're going to want these concepts in it. You're going to want the switching. So I would say doing less with... Uh, Doing less with the blade here and practicing going from any ready position here, flip your, yourself around and go back into it. Okay? So practice switching. Coming down here, coming up underneath, switching back. Make it one motion. Here, there. Okay? Boom. Okay, you see, it's not just bang, bang. I'm going to go here and come all the way through. You may not even see the reverse grip, right? Okay. That's the best kind. You don't want them to see you change them to see you change your knee, to change your grip. That's what's going to keep it secret. You don't want to start out back here. Because they know it. They can see it. Right? And next week, we'll teach you what to do when you see it. But, the other thing is work on footwork. And not just footwork, but spinning footwork. Okay? Turning around in a circle. Okay? In both directions. Okay? Uh, if you're into the serace, you do the walking with the force exercises. Okay. Learn to do these things where you're looking around. If you watch the Shen uh, Lesson Crate, which is where I've got most of my uh, reverse grip stuff in there now, you're constantly moving. You come around here, it switches, switches back, it turns off, <laughs> comes underneath, right? And I'm never stopping. Right? So you want to keep doing that. Even just practicing flipping it around in your hand. Right? Switching to your grips, making sure that you can get it. Notice that I can use both of my hands. Right? And I will. Okay? All of this stuff is what we're looking for. If you're just going to sit there and strike at the air with reverse grip, do yourself a favor and do it in standard grip that will actually do you some good. Okay. You want it this way. It's basically a thing of diminishing returns. You have to put so much work into getting to that level, it's probably not worth it, and there are easy ways to do the same thing. Right. So that's about it. Um, when you're using the reverse grip, it should be done in real close, right? If you're indoors, if you're in close quarters, being able to come through like this, but we're always thinking about trying to switch back, right? Even if we switch under, we switch right back, right? And so it's the switching. It's the change that makes the difference. It's not the, the position, okay? Um, we, we, we talk about uh, how so many things that we're doing in any martial art are transitions. Uh, very rarely are you doing anything in a static fashion. That holds true as much, if not more so, for your reverse grip or anything else you do. You never stay in the same stance. You don't always throw the same punch. You don't always use the same guard position. Everything changes as you move. Yep. So, um, in, and in forms that you're probably going to see a lot of reverse grip in, there'll be some in Niman, there'll be some in Juyo, Shan, of course, Ataru. We'll use it a lot. Anything that's going to incorporate any type of the SUMA concept, right? Um, you may be able to limitly use, to use it limit in a limited fashion in Sereisu as blaster deflection and stuff like that. It won't have a lot of use in, in, in actual combat and in, 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 in sparring, but you can use it there. Um, but yeah, so those would be the ba those would be the main places that you would see it. You're not going to see it a lot in Makashi. You're not going to see it a lot in really in Shicho or Sereisu, um, because we're, those are more setting up rules rather than breaking them. And once you get into the higher levels, you can, you can do stuff like that. Um, all right. Any other
uh, closing remarks or thoughts from anybody here? All right. Okay, well, we will uh, we'll, uh, call it for this evening. Let's uh, thank our panelists here, Lucian Kane, uh, Eric, Artorius, Greg, oh, what does he got there? Uh-oh. Uh, there you go. And Arabesque, or Arabesh, or however you pronounce it. See you next week, guys. All right. So, yes, from all of us here, remember to tune in next week for uh, what to do when you see this on the other side. And we'll show you how to uh, turn it into Mince Meat, right? Okay. So, from all of us here at Terra Prime, have a great weekend. May the Force be with you.